Welcome back. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. And today I am very excited to be talking to you about the Luminox Pacific Diver. As Luminox is a brand I've been wanting to check out for a while. In my mind, I've always seen them as sort of a brand for those that want the toughness and durability of a G-Shock, but in a more traditional form. And especially for those that are interested in tritium-based loom, or even military history, as Luminox got their big break designing a watch for the Navy SEALs, which I think was back in the 90s. So they're a very interesting brand with a very interesting history. So I was actually quite surprised and quite honored when I got an email from a rep asking if I'd like to check out one of their new releases. And as such, I just jumped on the opportunity. So here we are with the Pacific Diver. And as far as I know, they're not going to be asking for this back. So this watch was gifted to the channel and that's why the promotional tag is up. But that said, let's check this one out. First off, let's talk specs. Luminox lists the Pacific Diver as being 44 millimeters wide. So I was already expecting something on the mid to large side. However, the bezel itself is 44 millimeters. So yeah, it is 44 if you measure from the 12 to the six, but that's not taking into account these little wings on each of the sides. With those, you're closer to 46 and with the crown, you're at 49 millimeters. So yeah, this is one that is definitely reaching dinner plate territory. Slimmer wrists need not apply here. And honestly, I was a bit disappointed when I first got this because I was expecting something a little smaller. Now, despite that, on the wrist, it's not bad. You definitely feel the width. And with my seven and a quarter inch wrist, there is a bit of overhang from the 51 millimeter lug to lug. But the real saving grace here is that the watch is relatively thin for a diver at 11.8 millimeters. And I think you can see that here with its rather sleek profile which also translates into a very low center of gravity for the watch. So even though with its rubber strap, it's still fairly lightweight, I think it's around 100 grams, it hugs your wrist nicely. And throughout the day, I could easily forget I was wearing it. That thinness also means that it should be able to fit underneath some sleeves and jackets, which is a bonus in colder weather. Although given its size, I'd still say it's more appropriate for someone with a seven and a half to maybe eight inch and above wrist. Either that, or you just wear it on the outside of a wetsuit, which seems to be half the promotional photos here. Now, rounding out the specs, you have 200 meters of water resistance, a flat sapphire crystal with AR, a Ronda 515 quartz movement, and tritium-based loom, which is important because that always-on reliable loom is a cornerstone of Luminox watches. You also have a lug width here of 24 millimeters, and if you're looking to use aftermarket straps, that can make it a little more challenging. For reference here, all the extra straps I use are actually 22 millimeters. So they aren't quite ideal, but they can work with this. Although one thing that's very certain here is that the Pacific Diver has a very solid, well-made feel to it. It feels durable and could take whatever life throws at it. So while I'm not overly happy with the size, I am impressed with the build quality. The finishing for the case is also well done. Luminox is definitely going for a more tool watch look here with a mostly brushed finish. Yet there are these very thin polished chamfered edges running down each side. And that helps to highlight the very unique K shape as well as those extra wide love handles. Now, moving to the rear, there is a closed case back with all the particulars as well as a very lightly embossed star on it for some reason. Moving back to the front and at the right, you have a signed screw down crown, which is really tucked up into those love handles, which does help it from hitting the back of your wrist while you're wearing it. Now, while there isn't much surface area to get a hold of when you look at it from the front, turning the watch back over, you see that the crown is fully exposed. So with that, there's always enough area to get a grip on it to start unscrewing. One interesting aspect of the bezel is what it's made out of. Uh, Luminox refers to this material as Carbonox, and I believe it's some sort of carbon fiber composite. So with that, it should be fairly lightweight and fairly durable. As well as the black matte finish, adds just a bit of stealth flavor to the watch. And I think it also pairs nicely with the red dial underneath, with those detailed Arabics acting as an extension of the dial. Although, with a watch this big, you don't really need to enhance the presence that much. Regardless of that though, the action is pretty good. It's only 60 click, but it's still unidirectional and has just a hint of backplay, as well as a great tactile and audible click as you rotate it. 
for something so lightweight, it feels pretty good to turn it. At the moment, there are six different colorways of the Pacific Diver, three with bracelets and three without, including this really cool blacked out version. So if you're looking for something more stealthy, that's definitely the one to get. And it's definitely a stark contrast to this version with a dark red sunburst dial. The overall dial layout is rather straightforward. For this center section, everything is painted on except for the rather large Luminox logo. The indices are primarily composed of white painted bars, except for the Arabics at the 12 and 6. So rather straightforward and rather easy to use. Beyond the indices, you have a slightly raised chapter ring, which seems a lot more chaotic and crowded than the wide expansive center dial. And in some ways, it almost clashes with it. Yet the main reason that this is so chaotic is because this is the area where the tritium vials are applied for each hour indicator. So those vials do take up a fair amount of space, and tritium is important here because that is one of the key aspects of Luminox. So I can't really fault it too much for that, because they have to go somewhere. And I think that's also equally true with the hands. The hands are really just a flat brush surface, and they seem to primarily act as just a platform for the tritium. Overall, they are fairly boring, and rather simplistic as handsets go, not to mention pretty short for a dial this wide. But because that gunmetal gray matte finish is a real stark contrast to the red sunburst underneath it, they are fairly easy to read. And for whatever reason, my eyes always tended to be drawn right towards them. So there is an effectiveness to this design. And as long as we're here, we might as well talk about the elephant in the room for a second. You know, at this point in my life and this point in my reviewing career, I don't actually expect a perfectly lined up second hand. Some of you may disagree with that, but I found it to be more the exception than the rule. However, at this price and with Swiss made at the bottom of the dial, I do expect at least some effort to be close. Doesn't need to be perfect, but at least try to be close. After all, I mean, Swiss made should mean something, right? And here, this is hitting halfway between all the markers, and that's about the worst possible position you could get. So this is just half-assery at its finest. So when I look at this, I just imagine the person installing it not giving a shit. They're just phoning it in and not giving a damn. But worse, you know somewhere in the manufacturing process, there's someone doing the QC checks. And I can see someone just looking at this and going, good enough. And it's not. So this is just really disappointing. Now, hopefully this is a fluke and they're not all like this, but if it happened once, it could happen again. So yeah. Bottom line though, is if you're sensitive to secondhand alignment issues, it's best to try to see one of these in person before actually buying it. And honestly, I could probably say that about every quartz watch out there. But yeah, let's just move on. Design is always subjective, but overall I do like what Luminox is doing here. I know some people don't like dials where bars and Arabics are mixed, as it's kind of the equivalent of Hawaiian pizza, but just like with the Orient Mako 2, I actually like the look. And here in particular, I think the 12 and 6 helped to immediately orientate and kind of position the watch when you first look at it, which once again makes it more effective and easy to read. Now, this red version may be a bit flashy, but I think the key to understanding the design of the Pacific Diver is that function still triumphs over form, which I think is true about most Luminoxes, as even this wide expansive dial is rather easy to read with a quick glance. Although personally, I think you do need to balance some of that with more comfort. The Carbonox is also important to note here, as a lot of Luminox's collection are made primarily out of Carbonox, so one thing that really sets the Pacific Diver apart from the rest of the collection is its steel case. And in that regard, makes this one of the more conventional looking Luminoxes out there. So compared to most of their models, this isn't tactical, but it is still cool to look at. And I think this colorway in particular is the best one out there, as I really love the red dial combined with the black carbon fiber bezel. Now in terms of loom, we are looking at a T25 tritium based system so it never needs to be charged up. It's really self-powered, so to speak, and should stay at a consistent glow all night. I also like how Luminox does a dual color setup here, where you have orange at the very key points that aid in readability. Now, it is on the low end as far as tritium goes, 
personally, I think a T50 system is the sweet spot. But T25 is still good. I think it's still bright enough that you can easily make it out when your eyes adjust, but it's not so bright that it would grab other people's attention. And that's something that'll stay true for the next 10 to 20 years. After that, it might be too dim to make out, which is pretty much the case when it comes to tritium watches, as the half-life of tritium isn't something you can negotiate with, and that really does dictate the usable lifespan of it. Now, there are bracelet versions available, but I was more curious about this burgundy version and requested it, and it only comes with this rubber strap. But I gotta say that as far as rubber straps go, this is one of the best ones I've run across. It's thick, yet still very pliable. It's got a nice beefy hardware, and overall a great texture. I'd like it more if it was a little bit tapered, as here it goes from 24 to 22, but overall, this is one of the best rubber straps I've seen. And I think Luminox deserves some extra credit here for making it extra long. So if you do have larger wrists, or you want to wear this on the outside of a wetsuit, you should be good to go. All right, so let's start wrapping things up by talking value. And with this one, you're looking at a price of $5.95 with a rubber strap and $6.95 if you want the bracelet. Now, ignoring the secondhand alignment issue, overall, this is a really well-made watch. It is a bit of a mixed bag. There are some things here I like and some things I definitely don't. But I can't really deny that it's a tough, durable piece with a gorgeous red dial. And possibly ideal for somebody that wants something like a G-Shock, but in a more conventional package. But it is a quartz watch, and a quartz watch with a rather steep price tag. And if this was almost any other brand, and if this had just regular based loom, I think that'd be the end of the story. And even then, for a lot of you watching, and honestly most people out there, that's probably all you need to know. But this is a Luminox, and that means it uses tritium based loom. And I think that makes things a little more complicated when you're trying to fully evaluate it. The thing with tritium, in my opinion, is that it's something a lot of people want, but very few people will actually use, and even fewer will actually need. And if you're one of those people who will actually use it, let alone need it, you should get the best possible watch you can. Because at that point, it's no longer about style or fashion or design. It's about having a functional tool that you'll be constantly using. Which I think you can say about Luminox and their watches as a whole. Luminox really isn't for someone that already has a large collection of watches. This isn't for someone that's going to keep it in a watch box and break it out to wear to the office maybe a couple times a month. If that's you, you can still get one, but honestly I think you'd be wasting your money. This is for someone that I think needs a tool watch in the purest sense of the term. Someone who's going to wear it day in and night out. Someone who's been there, done that, and is continuing to get shit done. And even though this model is obviously more geared towards a civilian audience, I think the Navy SEAL watch and its design DNA really percolates through everything Luminox does. I think a great example of that is when I was looking on their website and saw that they give a rather healthy 25% discount to military first responders and medical personnel. And as a side note, I think it's really nice that Luminox included medical personnel here. I know quite a few people that work in the ER, and they're the ones first responders take people to. So they deal with a lot of the same crap, but oftentimes don't get included in stuff like this. But more to the point, I think this really shows who Luminox is really focused on. I think the watch is still a little bit wide and still a little bit pricey, but for people like that, I think this would be great, as those are the people who are too busy getting stuff done to really worry about their watch, so they do need something tough and durable, and the tritium will help them read it day and night, so again, something they don't need to worry about, as well as a quartz movement, something that's reliable, something that's accurate, and more importantly, something they don't have to fiddle with, again, something that's just there when they need it. But what do you guys think about all of this? About Luminox, about the Pacific Diver? And do you think I'm right or do you think I'm wrong? And if you think I'm wrong, can you think of a company that does it better for less? I can think of a few brands that have non-tritium based watches, but not necessarily one that does. So if you do know one, please mention it. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. Until next time.